بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى Most gracious, most merciful الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن وآله We commence by praising Allah سبحانه وتعالى by sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household, all his companions we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them all and to bless every single one of us. My brothers and sisters, Ramadan has almost come to an end. It is important for us to earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is important for us to know what the qualities are within a person that would earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every one of us would really be achieving the greatest success if we have inched towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we have earned his pleasure and his love. What I have chosen to do today is to go through verses of the Quran that describe the qualities and the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. There are so many verses in the Quran that Allah says he loves and then he makes mention of a quality. Or verses that say Allah does not love and then he makes mention of a quality or of a group of people. And I think if we go through these verses systematically, inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we would be in a better position to understand whether we are getting closer to Allah or further away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if we take a look at Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 222, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about those who seek forgiveness constantly. He loves them. He adores them. And those who are clean, they are pure. They love to be clean externally as well as internally. So the verse is, <laughs> Notice Allah says, indeed Allah loves. And then he mentions two qualities. A tawwab is the one who constantly makes tawbah. A ta'ib is one who made tawbah once. Tawwab is a person who always repents to Allah. You want the love of Allah? Learn to ask Allah's forgiveness so many times every single day. And you find Allah says, I love those who constantly ask me for forgiveness. Amazing. May Allah help us to achieve this. Then he says, mutatahirin, those who love to be clean. And when we say cleanliness, it's wrong for us to think. It only means using soap and cleaning your hands. May Allah forgive us. Cleanliness is not just external cleanliness. No, it includes internal cleanliness. You are clean. Your mind is clean. Your thoughts, your ideas, your business dealings are clean. Your relationships are clean. Everything is beautiful and clean. You are honest, you are upright. When it comes to your timing, the promises you make, the people, you fulfill them. This is cleanliness of your relationship. So be clean in every aspect of the term clean, including cleanliness in your acts of worship. When you worship, worship properly. Worship Allah alone. Worship in a manner taught by Muhammad wasallam. Be good about it, be clean, take your time. If you are to rush through your prayer, that's not called a clean prayer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us achieve cleanliness and purity in all our actions as well as physically. So yes, to be upon ablution, to be able to wash yourself, to be able to fulfill your, you know, the bath that is necessary for a believer. That is something that is only a certain aspect of cleanliness. You want to achieve the love of Allah, extend that cleanliness to all other aspects of your life. Then we have Surah Al-Imran, verse number 134. Allah says, 
والله يحب المحسنين and Allah loves those who do good they are kind those who are kind are you a kind person if not you can improve because that's how you will earn the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are you a person who's good are you really good to others do you reach out to people if you do Allah will reach out to you that's how you achieve the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then verse number 146 of Surah Allah Imran Allah says Wallahu yuhibbu sabirin Allah loves those who bear patience those who endure which means in my life there will be so many things happening that are difficult that are a challenge that are not exactly the way I wanted them I need to know they are always the way Allah wanted them I will surrender to it I will bear patience I need to earn the love of the controller he controls everything when I surrender to the fact that he is in charge I earn his love so Allah says I love those who surrender those who bear patience over what I have chosen for them someone passes away someone is sick you have a calamity you have an accident you have a disaster just bear patience and Allah says I will love you in return for that patience may Allah make it easy for us all then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about tahara and cleanliness once again in surah to tawbah verse number 108 Wallahu yuhibbul muttahirin. Allah loves those who cleanse. And in fact, this particular verse was revealed regarding the people of Quba and how the Muslimin in Quba used to clean themselves with water after using the toilet. And this is an act that has become compulsory for us all. Where there is water available, if we have used the loo, we need to use the water. This is part and parcel of the cleanliness. Take your time to ensure that you are a clean person in every single way. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 42, makes mention of something that affects every one of us. You know what he says? Inna Allah yuhibbul muqsitin. Allah loves those who stand firm for justice. Those who are fair, those who are just, whether it's against you, your family members, your friends, your relatives, friend or foe. Justice is justice. The person who is upon the highest level of justice is he who can be just when the right belongs to his enemy and he's ready to confirm that. Someone you don't like, they are right and you are wrong. And you actually get up and say, you know what, I'm actually wrong and the person is right. Imagine someone you hate and you detest. But you have understood that Allah requires from you and I to be just. And you want to earn the love of Allah. Allah says, you better be just. What's the opposite of justice? Injustice. You cannot usurp the rights of people claiming that I'm going to earn something in this world. You will lose something more valuable. And that is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, verse number 76 of Surah Ala Imran. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَّقِينَ Allah loves those who are conscious of Him at all times. Taqwa. Taqwa is to be conscious of Allah. Taqwa is also to create a barrier between you and the fire of Jahannam. Wiqaya means a barrier. To create a barrier between you and the fire of Jahannam, the fire of hell, by obeying the commands and abstaining from the prohibitions. That is known as taqwa. So when I'm conscious of Allah, I will not be able to do something that will earn the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because I'm conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I will only do that which pleases Allah. One of the reasons we are now fasting in this month of Ramadan is to achieve taqwa, to become more conscious of Allah. It's like a dose that is very concentrated to say this is a beautiful month of Ramadan. We're going to multiply the reward of the good deeds. So engage in them, become more conscious of Allah, abstain from food and drink and permissible sexual relations during daylight hours, and you will become more conscious of Allah during the rest of the year. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ I'm sure we've heard that so many times. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us piety. May He grant us consciousness. May He grant us the quality known as God-fearing. Meaning, may He make us God-fearing and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability 
to fulfill his commands and abstain from his prohibitions in a way that we achieve his love. He says, I love it when people are conscious of me. I love it. Imagine your makers telling you, I really love those who are conscious of me. They worried about me all the time. Imagine when you're in love with someone in this world, your children, your spouse, I hope it's halal inshallah. You would always be worried about them. You'd be worried about what they think of you. You know, if you really love your spouse the day he or she is upset, you would actually not rest until you find out what's going on. One of the things that breaks up marriages is when you're quiet, but you're upset and you're not telling me what is going on. I need to know, just communicate. Did I say something? Did I do something? Do you have a headache? Do you not? Why? Because you are concerned about this person. What about Allah? The example of Allah is far higher than anything we can give. But be worried about Allah, your relation. What does Allah think of you? What do you think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? This is the love of Allah. When you love someone, you're really worried about what they think about you. How is your relationship with them? May Allah help us improve in this regard. Verse number 159 of Surah Ala Imran, Allah says, Inna Allah, Allah loves those who lay their trust in Him. Allah has given you and I a capacity, physical ability to do certain things. We can try. We say Bismillah in the name of Allah and we set off to do something that is beneficial for us. But at a certain point, we know that it's Allah in total control. We have to leave it in the hands of Allah. We have to trust Him to let the rest happen. For example, I lock my door. I seal my, my for example, vehicle. I would perhaps arm the vehicle with an alarm. And at the end of the day, if something is going to happen, I know that, you know what, that's in the hands of Allah. I tried my best. I did what Allah has given me in terms of capacity. The rest of it, I lay my trust in Allah. May Allah help us to lay our trust upon Him. For indeed, He says, I love those who trust me correctly. Do you know what is the meaning of correct trust? Do not insult Allah by not playing your role. For example, a person wants a job and he says, I trust Allah that I will get a job. But he sleeps whole day. He doesn't make an effort. He doesn't want to go out. And then he says, but I trust Allah. Weren't we taught that Allah loves those who trust him? Allah says that is not tawakkul, that is tawakkul. The difference between tawakkul and tawakkul. Tawakkul is to lay your trust in Allah after having done what he gave you in terms of capacity and fulfilled whatever you can. Who gave you the energy to get up in the morning and go to hunt for the job? It was Allah. So you used it and then you said, Oh Allah, I used what you gave me and I lay my trust in you. That is proper tawakkul. Allah loves you because you are not insulting him. But Allah says, you play your role. I will play mine. And then you say, I've left my doors open. I've left the car open. I've put my money on the front seat and I have full trust in Allah. You have insulted Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you did not play your role. That's called tawakul. Don't ever confuse the two. Many people think out of piety that to sit back and laze and relax and still think Allah is going to provide for you is part of tawakul. In fact, it was written that you would be foolish, you would insult Allah and you would not get anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May he never make us from those who don't understand this. So remember, you want to earn the love of Allah? Do what Allah has given you in terms of capacity. Say, for example, you want to marry someone. You can't just sit and keep on making dua and say, oh Allah, let them know I want to marry them. Do something about it. Talk, open your mouth, go and see someone, visit and so on. And inshallah, things will happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Then in Surah Al-Saf, it's a powerful verse regarding warfare, regarding defending the ummah, regarding defending the nation. Allah says, verse number four, Speaking about how detested it is to be a coward, to be a person who does not have any bravery at all. Allah loves those who are brave such that when they go out to defend the ummah and the nation, when they fight, they fight in a row. They ensure they don't just go back. They don't just give up. They are not cowards. You know, if we were to defend the nation, uh, we would actually be required to be brave people. Bravery is something that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is where he says, I love those who are brave. And obviously the wording is far stronger. But at the same time, the lesson we learn from this 
is that we as the Muslim Ummah should always be brave people. We should not be people who run away from situations in order to please people, but rather we should be pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that we've spoken about the verses connected to the love of Allah, and we've spoken about how Allah says Allah loves, and then each one of the qualities in the Quran, I'd like to go through the verses where he says Allah does not love, and then he mentions qualities. Because we need to know this, this is how we would strike the balance. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 190. <laughs> Allah does not like those who transgress, who go beyond the limits regarding certain things. You sin against Allah. Allah does not like those who transgress. And the example here is given of those perhaps sometimes when you are retaliating to something that has happened to you and you go beyond the limits. You actually re react in a far more dangerous way or far more than the action would require. In that case, you've gone beyond the limits. So for example, and I'm going to give you a simple example that's just come to my head now. If someone slaps you, you have the right to slap them back. Subhanallah. But if someone slaps you and you murder them in return, may Allah forgive us, really. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. You need to understand the controlled retaliation. This is why Allah says, if you are going to forgive, it's better for you. If you're going to forgive, it's better for you. Because when you forgive, Allah watches that quality of yours. And Allah says, I have a quality that is higher than this. It's also forgiveness. But I forgive more grave sins that are committed. I've seen that you have found it in your heart to forgive someone that it was very or whom it was very difficult to forgive. I have forgiven you all your sins for you is paradise. Wow. Subhanallah. May Allah do that to us. But it's not easy for us to forgive people who've wronged us. It's something we need to try and create the habit of. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us all. May he soften our hearts, especially in this beautiful month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to solve our matters and problems, resolve, come together as families and as an ummah. Amin. Then in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 205, Allah says, Wallahu la Allah does not like those who spread fasad. What is fasad? Chaos, corruption. That which is sinful, Allah doesn't like it. Fasad, you're spreading chaos on earth, corruption on earth. Allah doesn't like that at all. So we need to ask ourselves, are we people who are corrupt? If that's the case, we are distancing ourselves from the love of Allah, the one who made you, the one whom you have no option but to return to. I have no option but to return to Allah. In a few days, I'll be going back to Allah and so will you. Who knows, perhaps later on today, it's only Allah who knows the exact timing. But that's it. When we go back to Allah, the one who brought us here in the first place, when we go back to him, he's going to see what we've done. And one of the beautiful things we could have done is to be conscious of what he loves and what he does not love to make sure that we earn that love and we stay away from what he does not love. So verse number 276 of the same surah, Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu la kulla kaffarin athim. Allah does not like those who are ungrateful and sinful. Kaffar. Kufr means to disbelieve. But kufr in the language, Arabic language, refers to ingratitude. A person who denies, a person who covers. You are ungrateful. So when Allah says kaffar, he's referring to more than one thing. Number one, he refers to those who are ungrateful. Allah blessed you and bestowed upon you so many things. Are you really grateful for that? Gratitude is shown by believing in him, worshiping him alone. So if you don't, you become known as a person who's kafar from a different angle. And that is now disbelief. So a person who disbelieves is known as a, a, a one of the kuffar because he has denied the favors of Allah upon him. And he has now worshiped something besides Allah yet. Allah created him. So this is why Allah says he does not like those who are ungrateful and he does not like those who are sinful. Sinful meaning you continue sinning without turning to Allah. We heard moments ago Allah loves those who repent to Allah, which means if you've sinned, you regret it and you turn to Allah, Allah loves you. But if you've sinned and you keep on sinning and you've got no intention in your heart to turn back to Allah, you commit to sin once and it hurts your heart. Person who goes gambling, a person who perhaps 
commits adultery, a person who drinks alcohol, on drugs, the first few times they do it, they would regret a lot. But when they become caught in the crutch or in the clutch of the devil, they would actually not regret. At a certain point, they would enjoy it and they would continue. That shows you are now far, far, far from the love of Allah. Yes, Allah is your maker and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for you to turn. But in order to earn that love, you just need to turn to Allah. Don't be from amongst the ungrateful. Don't be from among those who sin without batting an eyelid, without feeling in their hearts that remorse and that regret. Verse number 32 of Surah Ala Imran, Allah speaks about those who turn back from the obedience of Allah. Allah says, If you are going to go back, if you are going to turn away from the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah does not like those who disbelieve and those who are ungrateful. Like I told you, the term kufr does not only refer to disbelief, but it refers to ingratitude. Those who are ungrateful. Similarly, Ala Imran, verse number 57, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu la Allah does not like those who oppress. What is the meaning of the term zulm in the Arabic language? It means to put something where it does not belong. So if we are people who put things where these things don't belong, we become people who are oppressive. The term oppression might sound heavy, but it is one of the interpretations of the word zulm and zalim. And this is why Allah says the biggest oppression is known as shirk. Shirk meaning to associate partners with Allah. Indeed, association of partnership with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a grave oppression. You've put worship where it does not belong. Acts of worship belong to Allah. Ibadah belongs to Allah. Do not render it for anyone or anything besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 64 of Surah Al-Ma'idah, Wallahu la yuhibbul mufsidin. Allah does not like those who spread chaos, corruption on earth. We spoke about that a few moments ago. Then in Surah An-Nisa, Allah says, and this is connected to our qualities, our character and conduct. Allah does not love those who are self-conceited and those who are proud. They have pride. The haughtiness. Allah does not like those who have pride in them. Ask yourself, are you a person who has this haughtiness in you? You feel you're better than everybody else. The hadith describes the meaning of pride and it says, Pride in Islam refers to two things. When you despise people and when you deny the truth. Pride has nothing to do with the quality of your clothing, the quality of your conveyance or your living. No, pride has got to do with the attitude you have. So if you want to earn the love of Allah, improve your attitude towards other people. Don't despise others. Don't belittle. Don't think you're the big guy and everyone else is little. Not at all. No matter what you have, be humble. Allah will love you. If we are people who are haughty, remember, we are just distancing ourselves from the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he says in this beautiful verse. Then verse number 107, Allah says, Inna Allah la yuhibbu kulla khawanin atheem. Surah An-Nisa 107. Allah does not like those who deceive and those who are sinful. Let's talk of deception. How many of us have deceived our own spouses, our family members, our brothers and sisters, members of the ummah, other human beings. Don't think that if a person is not a Muslim, you, you are allowed to deceive them. Not at all. You cannot. They are human beings. Perhaps they would be attracted to the beautiful fold of Islam if you are a person who is upright. Listen to what Allah says in Surah Al-An'am, verse number 141. Allah does not like those who are extravagant, those who waste their money. No matter how much money you have, don't be wasteful. Don't be wasteful. Learn to spend correctly. Don't be miserly. Don't be wasteful. Strike the balance in the middle. Yes, you buy what you need and inshallah you make sure that you have spent that which is permissible without extravagance. One might ask, so what is the meaning of extravagance? When you have two of what you need one of, you're extravagant, even if it's cheap. So say for example, I have a Porsche and a Bentley, but I need both vehicles. I'm not extravagant. May Allah grant us good conveyance. I mean, 
But if I have two Toyotas and I don't need them, trust me, I'm wasting. Allahu Akbar. It's just an example that I've thought of right now to give it to or to, to draw here to say, if I've got 45 pairs of clothes in my cupboard, I'm wasting. But if I've got 20 pairs and I'm using all of them, I'm not wasting. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to use what we have. I normally say, if you have clothing in your cupboard that you have not used for one year, give it away, you don't need it. Some people have revised that downwards to say six months, but I think six months, perhaps winter clothing, summer clothing, you know, you might want to keep something. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us in every single way. Three more verses. One says in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 58, Inna Allah la yuhibbul khainin. Allah does not like those who cheat. That's something similar to deception as well. Those who deceive. The next verse, Surah Al-Nahl, verse 23. Allah does not like those who are arrogant. Another quality similar to that of pride. The two are connected. Pride, haughtiness, arrogance. All these are qualities Allah says, I don't like. Those people, I don't want them. I don't like them. In order to earn the love of Allah, and the love of Allah is always close at hand. You need to improve on your quality, your character, your conduct. Improve your heart and you find the love of Allah will come in your direction. The hadith is beautiful. It says, whoever comes to Allah walking, Allah comes to them rushing. So if you try to earn the love of Allah, it definitely comes in your direction. May Allah love us and may he make it easy for us. The last verse also connected to what we've already mentioned. Surah Al-Hajj verse number 38. Allah says, Inna Allah la yuhibbu kulla kafur. Allah does not like those who deceive, those who cheat, those who are ungrateful, those who disbelieve, those who turn away from the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May He strengthen us all. We've spoken about how to earn the love of Allah through the verses that show us in the Quran where they have said, Allah Himself says, Allah loves, and then He makes mention of the quality. And also through where Allah says Allah does not love and then he makes mention of the quality. I hope and I pray we've benefited from this in this beautiful Friday of Ramadan so that we can earn the love of Allah. May Allah love us all. May Allah grant us all goodness and ease. May Allah grant cure to all those who are sick and ill. And may Allah have mercy upon all those who've passed away.